Hello everyone. Welcome to Skills Build Training YouTube channel. Myself Muhammad Zubair and this channel is all about showing you how to become an IT pro really fast. So the topic of today's video is 20 awesome Linux applications you must install. So without any further ado, let's get started. For today's video, I'm using Ubuntu Linux distribution. You can use any of the Linux distribution, but you will be able to download and install the application in your Linux distribution, which I'm going to show you. Yes, there might be some difference in the commands as I'm using Ubuntu and you might have different Linux distribution. Number one, Google Chrome. As we all know, it is a web browser but in most of the Linux distribution, we get Mozilla Firefox as default web browser. But most of the people like to use Google Chrome. So it is a very good application that you should consider and install into your Linux distribution. And it is used by the most number of internet users as well as it is easy to use and you can do a lot of customization as per your liking in it. To download Google Chrome, we have to use wget to download the latest google chrome.dev package and after we are done we have to install the google chrome the commands to download the .dev package and to install the google chrome into your ubuntu linux distribution you can see the commands on your screen so that was all about google chrome and now let's move ahead number two vlc is a media player you can play your audio and video files in it and along with that it also allows you to do a little bit of editing with your audio and video files. Again, it is used by majority of the user out there as it is very easy to use and you can play any video and audio format file in this tool. The download process of VLC Media Player is really simple. You can go to your software repository as in my case, it is Ubuntu software repository. As you can see here, it is available in here and here it says installed. So you can download and install it into your Linux distribution. So that was all about it. And now let's move on to the third application. Number three, Atom Text Editor. Atom Text Editor has one of the best user interfaces and it is a feature rich text editor that offers like auto completion, syntax, highlighting and support of extensions and plugins. So this is how it looks like. And here you can see it is just like any other text editor which you see out there and here you can see it has many options like install a package you can choose a theme or you can add different snippets into your text editor in case if you want to download and install it there are some commands which you need to run on your ubuntu and the first command is sudo add apt repository and then you have to add the name of repository which in my case is ppa then you have to update your system by command sudo apt get update and at the end you are good to go with downloading and installing your atom and the command for that is sudo apt get install atom number four gimp photo editor gimp is a free and open source photo editor for ubuntu and it is arguably a best alternative to adobe photoshop on windows and if you have been continuously using Adobe Photoshop and finding it difficult to get used to GIMP, then you can customize GIMP to look very similar to the Photoshop. And here you can see we have a lot of editing options which GIMP offer. Here you can add different filters onto your images or onto your pictures. Then you have colors, then you have whole section of tools and here you have layers. And these are different tools which you can use for the editing of your pictures. It is a really powerful tool and some people consider it as an alternative of Photoshop. So to download it, you can go to your software repository. Here it is, and it is available free of cost as it is an open source application. So you have two options to choose. First one is GNU image manipulation program, and then you have PhotoGim. You can install any one of these as per your liking, and you can use as per your needs. So I will just close this one. Number five. Skype. Skype is a very popular cross-platform video calling application and it is also available for the Linux user as well. But in Linux, 
it is available as a snap app skype is an instant messaging application and you can do audio and video calling with the help of it as well along with that you can do file sharing and you can do screen sharing as well and most importantly it is a free application to use to download and install skype into your system you just have to go to your software repository and then you just have to search for skype here you can see i have already installed it and that is why it says installed so it was available in my software repository so i have downloaded it and installed it from here in case if you do not find this one into your software repository or you do not want to install and download it from here you can download that from the terminal as well for that you just have to write a simple command and that is sudo apt get install skype and your terminal will download and install it on its own number 6 virtual box well virtual box is a cross platform virtualization software application and that was developed by the oracle corporation if you love to try a different operating system and you do not want to install them separately into your machine so what you can do you can download virtual box manager and inside it you can install different operating system like you can install windows mac or you can install any linux distribution into your virtual box what is the benefit of it you do not have to uninstall your parent operating system for example as i am using the ubuntu what i can do here i can install windows or i can install mac or even i can install different other linux distribution inside this virtual box and in case if i want to run those operating system i just have to open my virtual box and from there i'll be able to run my different operating system inside my this ubuntu linux distribution that is why virtual box is the must have ubuntu application or linux application which you should have in your linux distribution to download your virtual box into your system you just have to go to your software repository here you just have to search for virtual box and here you can see it is available in the software repository i have already installed it that is why it says installed and now let's move on to the seventh application number 7 genome tweaks well with the help of this tool we can perform a lot of customization in our linux distribution as i am using the ubuntu with genome desktop that is why i have downloaded the genome tweaks you can download the unity tweak tool and it will also allow you to do a lot of customization in your linux distribution and without it you will have limited options in terms of customization and as here you can see i can do different customization with respect to my appearance extensions fonts keyboard and mouse and i have different other option for example if i go to my keyboard and mouse and here are different customization which are available for me in order to download and install your genome tweaks you just have to go to your software repository and here you just have to search for it and here you can see it is available in the software repository so this is a really simple tool which you can download and you can do a lot of customization over the respect to your desktop environment number 8 ubuntu cleaner ubuntu cleaner is a tool which is used for system maintenance especially it is designed to remove packages that are no longer useful and it also removes unnecessary apps and clean up browser caches ubuntu cleaner has a very simple user interface which is very easy to use and it is one of the best alternative to bleach bit which is also a decent cleaning tool available for linux distribution and with the help of it you will be able to clean different packages and caches of your browser your system performance will improve so this is the interface of ubuntu cleaner and here you have different options which you can do here i have my browsers which are chrome and firefox and these are different system packages which i can clean here i will just close this one and now in order to download and install it you again have to add a repository into your system for that you can see the command on your screen and after that you have to update your system and to update your system the command is really simple and that is sudo apt get update and then you are good to download and install ubuntu cleaner and the command is sudo apt get install ubuntu cleaner number 9 pixbuff pixbuff is a desktop client from pixbuff photo community hub 
It lets you to upload, share and sell your photos and it supports photo sharing to social media networks like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, etc. And photography services include Flickr, 500px and Upic. Pixbuff offers feature like analytics which gives you stat about clicks, retweets, repins on your photos, scheduled posts, dedicated iOS extensions. It also has mobile app so that you can always be connected with your Pixbuff account from anywhere and it is available to download in Ubuntu Software Center as a snap package. So I'll show you that how it is available. Here you can see I have just searched for Pixbuff and here we have available in our software repository. I have already installed it from here and here you can see it says installed. Number 10 Blender. Well Blender is another free and open source 3D creation application software and it allows you to create 3D printed models, animated films, video games etc and it comes with integrated games engine out of the box which you can use to develop and test video games and blender has the catchy user interface which is easy to use and it also includes features like built-in render engine digital sculpturing simulation tool animation tools and many more things and it is one of the best application you will ever find for the linux considering it is free and the feature it offers so this is how it looks like to download the blender into your system you just have to go to your software repository as i'm going in my ubuntu software repository and here you can see i have already installed it from my repository number 11 audacity audacity is an open source audio editing application which you can use to record and edit your audio files you can record audio from various inputs like microphone electric guitar etc it also gives you the flexibility and ability to edit and trim audio clips according to your need so this is the interface or you can say this is how the audacity looks like here you have different controls related to your audio inputs and then you have different tools which you can use to edit trim or you can say customize your audio clips audacity was released with new features for ubuntu and it included themes improvement, zoom toggle commands, etc. Apart from these, it also offers features like various audio effects, including noise reduction and many more. So if you are into audio or video editing, or if you are a voiceover artist, then this tool is a must for you, as it is very easy to use and it's user friendly. And apart from that, the most important thing is it's free of cost. There are two ways to install it. First one is to install it by using the software repository. As you can see, I have installed it from the software repository. So just search for Audacity in your repository and you will be able to search for it. And from there, you will be able to download and install it. Second way is by using some commands and you can see the commands on your screen. With the help of first command, you will be able to add a repository and then you have to update your system and at the end you have to write a command which is sudo apt get install audacity and then your system will download and install the audacity in your linux distribution and now let's move on to the next one number 12 clam tk as we know viruses meant to harm your windows pc and they cannot do any harm to your Ubuntu, but it is always prone to get infected by some mails from Windows PC, which can contain harmful files. So it is safe to have some antivirus application on Linux too. Well, we do have Firefall in Ubuntu, but it is better to have one more external or third party tool. So this is the tool which I'm talking about, and this is the interface, or you can say this is how it looks like. Here it allows you different options like here you can see we have different configuration options which you can do and down here we have some analysis tool and then we have some updates option. Let's check out the settings of this tool and here you can see we can scan our system with different setting. As you can see here it says scan files larger than 20 MB. So whether you want to allow it or deny it, it's up to you. So these are some of the settings or you can say some of the customization option which this tool provides. 
Along with all these features, this tool is a very lightweight malware scanner and it scans files and folders on your Linux distribution. And it will also clean if any harmful files are found on your system. And it is available as a snap package and can be downloaded from the software center. You can download and install it by the terminal as well. So I'll show you in the software repository. Here you can see I have just searched for this tool and here it is and it is already installed. So I have installed this tool by using my software repository. You can do it as well. Number 13, PyCharm. If you are a programmer or if you are into data sciences, you must be working on Python. And this is a very great tool for Python programming as it is really simple to use and user friendly. Along with that, it also allows you to install different libraries, different Python packages and many other things. This is the interface of PyCharm and from here you can start a new project or you can open an existing one. So let's create a new project here. So I will just click on it. But before that, here you can see we have different options related to this tool. As you can see here, we can customize this one and we can install some plugins into this one related to our needs. And down here, we have different options which are related to learning and then we have some courses. So I'll create a new project here. I'll go with the default name. So I will just click on create. We are good to go. Our project has been created successfully. And this is my default file which was created by default. And now we are good to go and we are good to start programming in our Python language. So I will just remove all of this one. So this is how you can create your new projects and you can start working on them. In order to install PyCharm into your Linux distribution, you just have to go to your software repository and from there you will be able to search for it and download it. As you can see here, I have searched for it in my software repository and here I have three version. First one is for professional developers and then I have PyCharm Pro and the last one which is PyCharm Education or you can say edu it is for the students and it's free so that was all about paycharm and now let's move on to the next one number 14 telegram well this application got very prominent or got into very hot news in recent times as whatsapp introduced and announced their new privacy policies many people had concerns about their privacy and that is why a lot of people migrated to telegram from whatsapp if i say that it is an alternative of whatsapp then it wouldn't be wrong because this tool also allows you to do audio calls audio and video file sharing and along with that you can do almost everything which you can do in your whatsapp basically telegram is a cloud-based instant messaging and voice over ip platform and it got a lot of popularity in recent years it is an open source and cross-platform messenger where user can send messages, share videos, photos, audio and other files. You can also download it in your mobile phone so that you can keep track of your messages, your chats, etc. Some of the notable features which you can find in Telegram are secret chats, voice messages, bots, telescope for video messages, live locations and social login. Privacy and security is the highest priority of Telegram. So all the messages you send and receive are end-to-end -end encrypted. And that is why people started to shift from WhatsApp to Telegram because people had only one concern and that was about their privacy. And Telegram made sure that people do not lose it. In order to install Telegram into your Linux distribution, you have to use a simple command as I have installed it into my Ubuntu and the command you can see on your screen. And the command is sudo snap install telegram desktop and after that you will be able to download and install it into your system the working of telegram is really simple here you have two options either you can scan it from your mobile application and your account will be logged in automatically or you can log in using your mobile phone number so here you just have to add your mobile number and after that you are good to go and that was all about telegram and now i will just close this one 
and let's move ahead. Number 15, NeoFetch. Well, this tool is a terminal based tool, means you have to use this one into the terminal. And it is a really cool system information tool that gives you all the information about system by running a simple command. As you can see on your screen, I have just run a simple command, which is NeoFetch. And after that, I have just pressed my enter. And this is the information which I got. It is a cool tool to have because it gives you the information about your desktop environment, kernel version, bash version, and GTK theme you are running at the moment. And as compared to the other system information tools, this tool is highly customizable. You can perform various customizations using the command lines. And here you can see we have a different option. In terms of our operating system, we are using Ubuntu 21.04. Then this is our host. Then we have our kernel. Then we have our packages, shell resolution, and so on. And this is our desktop environment at the moment, which is Genome 3.38. And down here, we have some information related to our CPU, GPU, and memory. And this is the important one. Here it tells you about that, how much memory is being used at the moment and how much is free. In order to install NeoFetch into your system, you have to use simple commands. And you can see the commands on your screen. Basically, first of all, you have to add a repository and after that, you have to update your Linux distribution. And at the end, you will be able to install NeoFetch into your system. And the command for that is sudo apt get install NeoFetch. And this is how you will be able to download and install NeoFetch into your system. Number 16, htop. This tool is also based on your terminal means you have to use this one into your terminal. Let's say if I write here top and hit enter, here you can see we have different information related to our system. These are the different processes and these are different IDs of each process and these are the user. At the moment, we have two users into our system. One is Zubair and second is root. And we have every information regarding who is using which process. And after that, we have the CPU percentage, mean each process is using this percent or this much CPU. And then we have different other information. But at the top, if you see here, we have some more information, but we cannot make anything out of this information because it is not organized one or it is not in user friendly manner. In order to get this information in a very user friendly manner, what you can do, you can install htop into your Linux distribution. And to do that, you just have to write a simple command into your terminal and that is sudo apt install htop. And you can see this command on your screen as well. So I will now get out of this I will press Ctrl Z and now I will write here htop and now if I hit enter here you can see we have this information in more organized and more suitable or you can say more user friendlier way and here we have all the information about our memory CPU and our swappiness and down here we have different information about our process IDs then we have our users and then we have all the same information which we got in top but the one very good thing in this one is you can do a little bit of customization with respect to your processes. For example, if I press F5 here, here you can see my processes have been sorted and we have the tree of processes now. This organizes the child processes to its primary processes IDs. And now if I press F9 and what I can do now, I can kill any process as per my need. So htop allows you to do that by using the simple GUI. There are commands which you can use to kill a particular process like we have kill minus 9 or kill minus 15 command. But with the help of htop, you can kill a process with the help of graphical user interface. And that was all about htop. And now let's move ahead. Number 17, Flameshot. Well, this is a really useful and a really cool tool. And with the help of that, you can take a screenshot or you can capture a particular region of your screen. It works just like the one in the Windows. In Windows, we have snipping tool 
and in Ubuntu or in Linux distribution, we have different tools for taking screenshots. If I click on take new screenshot, I will just click on it. And now it asks me to select the region which I want to capture. So let's say I'll select this region. And now if I leave my mouse here, I have different editing option which can apply onto this selected region or onto this screenshot. And in order to save this one, you just have to press Ctrl S and it will take you to a particular directory. And if you want to save it into your personalized directory, you just have to go to that directory. And after that, you just have to click on save. From here, you can rename your screenshot or your captured screen, and then you are good to go. Well, in order to install this one, it is really easy to install as you can install it from the software repository. So here, if I search for Flameshot, here you can see it is available into our system. You can install it from the terminal as well, but as it is available in the software repository, so you do not have to worry about anything as you do not have to add or install any repository. Number 18, Dropbox. Well, most of you might have used this one before coming to your Linux. So I'm sure you might have an idea that how this tool works. In case if you do not know what it is and how it works, basically it is a standout player in cloud storage and its Linux client works really well on Ubuntu when installed properly. While Google Drive comes out of the box on Ubuntu, Dropbox is still a preferred cloud storage tool on Linux in terms of feature it offers. And it always works in background and backup new files from your system to cloud storage. So basically, it is a tool which you install onto your system. It will post your files onto your cloud. As you can see here, I have a folder with the name of Dropbox and it is into my home directory. Whatever or whenever any file I paste here or I copy here, these files will be uploaded onto my cloud account and I can access those files from anywhere, anytime. And as you can see here, we have a small icon of this tool. And if I click on it, here we have different options. So I have already clicked on this option, which is open Dropbox folder. And then we have a launch Dropbox website. So it will take us to the Dropbox website and we can log in into our account and we will see same these files into our account which are here. So basically you do not have to make backup of your data manually. You just have to drop your files, your data or your any folders into this folder which is Dropbox folder and Dropbox will make backup of that folder or of that data onto your cloud account on its own. So this is a really must have tool which you should install into your Linux distribution. Number 19, Shredder Duplicate Finder. Well, who does not like to have free space into the system? And this tool just do that. It will find out the duplicate files into your system and then you will be able to delete those files and obviously some of the space will get free. So these are the different directories where you can apply this tool. Let's say if I want to search for my desktop, I just have to click on this one. And then here it says scan folders or you can turn on these option. And now what it will do, this tool will work in these directory too. And here you can see the small arrows. And let's say if I click on this one. So here it is searching for the duplicate files. And here it says nothing found. It means we have no duplicate data or no duplicate files into this particular directory. And in case if you want to add a particular directory or a particular location into this tool, you can do that by just clicking on this simple button which says add location. And down here, we have an option which says remove from list. And this option is used to remove any of these directory which you can see on your screen. In order to install this tool into your Linux distribution, you just have to go to your software repository. And from there, you just have to search for it. As you can see, I have searched for it and here it is. So I have downloaded and installed it from my software repository. If you are using any other Linux distribution, like I'm using Ubuntu, and let's say you are using Arc Linux or you are using Fedora or Manjaro, you will find this type of tool into your system as well, but it may not be there with the same name. So there are very high chances that you will get the tool with same features and same functionality. So look for it and use it. 
to get some free space into your system. Number 20, QTQR. Well, the last tool for today's video in my list is QTQR and it is my most favorite one as well. It is QT based application and it lets you create and read QR codes in Ubuntu and it was developed in Python and QT and along with that, it has a very simple and easy to use and easy to understand interface. And in that tool, you can encode anything. For example, here we have different data types. Like here you can see at the moment we have text. If I click on my drop down arrow, here I have different other options of which I can convert into my QR code. So let's say I want to convert a particular text into a QR code. So I will just write here skills build training YouTube channel and here you can see we have a QR code on our right side and here we have a different customization option like here we have a pixel size if I want to increase its size I just have to increase the pixel size and here you can see we are doing it perfectly if you want to decrease it so just decrease the pixel size and here you have your margin size at the moment you can see we have no margin on our QR code and in case if you want to add some just add the margin size and here you can see we have some margin size here and in error correction we have some options as well now the questions comes that how you can download and install it well one way is to download it from your software repository as here you can see I have downloaded it from my software repository and the other way is by the use of some commands and you can see the commands on your screen. With the help of us command, you will be able to add some repository into your system. And with the help of second command, you will update your system. And with the help of last command, you will be able to install this tool into your Linux distribution. So with that, we are done with our 20 applications for our Linux distributions. And I hope now that you must have liked all of them. If that is the case, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon along with it. If you have something to ask, please leave a comment below. We will get back to you as soon as possible. Till the next video, take care.